Getting networking working in your sandbox project can be pretty frustrating at times. Thankfully, Gary and the sandbox team want the engine to be as accessible as possible, and it is actually a lot easier to set up than it would be in other engines. I'm using the sweeper project template that comes with sandbox, and I've added a few things like these UFOs and turning the player into a prefab. So the first thing we want to do is add a network helper object, which every scene needs. Now you'll notice that this network helper needs two things, a player prefab and an array of spawn points. So let's create the spawn point. And we're going to put our player prefab into that property as well. When the server is started or a client joins, the player prefab is going to be spawned in the active scene and linked to that player, that person who joined. Now note that this doesn't need to be a tank or a humanoid that this player prefab is set to. It can be something as simple as an empty game object that sends the player's input commands to other objects, if that's what your project needs. So right now the client can move both itself and the host. And to prevent this, we can add an is proxy check to our player controller. Is proxy is just another way to say, is this owned by a different client? If it's easier for you, here's a way to rewrite this. And you can just use this in your project to check. Is this me? Yes. Okay. Well then let me do these actions. Right now, if you test this scene, you'll find that the camera is still acting weird. What's happening is that the camera is spawning and activating on both clients. We only want one camera active for the player that owns it. So first, disable the camera in the prefab so that it spawns into the scene disabled. And now in our code, we're going to get a reference to the camera. We're gonna check and make sure that we do have the reference to the camera and then check and make sure that is proxy is true. And if so, we can enable our camera. So the last step here is to get the UFOs spawning. So this shoot method is just a simple method that runs when left click is pressed. Now we only want the host to have the power to spawn UFOs. For that, we can use networking.isHost. And we'll put that at the top of the method so the rest doesn't run unless you're the host. Then I'm gonna spawn the UFO locally using these lines. Now this line is the most important. We need to spawn the UFO on all the other clients as well. And that's what network spawn does. So whenever you clone an object, if you want it to appear on other clients, you need to use network spawn right afterward. So back in our project, we can see that our UFOs are synced on both clients. And whenever we spawn UFOs, they're spawning correctly. So I was gonna end the tutorial here, but I wanted to show you the three different types of networking statuses that objects can have. So the first that we have is never network. It's not going to show up on the client at all, only on the host. Then we have network object. This is going to show up on the client and the host. The host is going to continuously update the client on the synced properties and make sure that they're synced between the host and the client. And normally position is synced by default when you have network object enabled. Finally, we have sync snapshot. These are synced as soon as the client joins the host. Now you'll notice that as they move around, they're no longer synced. And if I take this example right here where they are desynced, I can restart my client and rejoin and they're going to be synced on join. So whenever the client joins, they'll be synced up, but any movement or sort of physics or scripts can desync between the host and the client. Thanks for watching. I know that this only covers the basics of networking in Sandbox. I plan on going into a deeper dive on networking and how to set up an entire Sandbox project in another video.